It is a tremendous pleasure for me to be back in Washington, D.C., and to be back in Mary's house in this most beautiful shrine, but above all, to see so many of you gathered here today to honor our Blessed Mother and to honor her request, which is that we should pray the Rosary every day. As Promoter General of the Holy Rosary, I often say that there is really only one true promoter of the Rosary, and she is the best of all, our Blessed Mother herself. And our Mother has come back again and again, encouraging us and teaching us and showing us how to pray the Rosary. As Promoter General of the Rosary then, one of my roles isn't just to encourage us to pray the Rosary, but also to promote and encourage the growth of something called the Confraternity of the Holy Rosary, which is a special apostolate of the Dominican order. It is a precious part of our Dominican family. And indeed, the Rosary Confraternity numbers among it some of our saints and martyrs, including the martyr saint after whom I'm named, San Lorenzo Ruiz of Manila, whom you can see in the great dome above you. The, conf the confraternity has been called the most indulgenced, pious association of the church. And Pope Leo XIII, who entrusted it in a special way to the Dominican order, said that the confraternity of the Holy Rosary consists of many being banded together in fraternal charity, united in the praying of the Holy Rosary together and calling upon Mary's help. What we have witnessed here today is surely a wonderful sign of people united in prayer, the children of Mary, calling upon Our Lady's help. Although we can and we do and we should pray the rosary alone, and this of course has great merit, nevertheless, when we pray as a member of the rosary confraternity, then our prayers are united with countless others and so our prayers become all the more powerful and call down a waterfall, a torrent of graces. As St. John Marie Vianney said, if anyone has the happiness of being in the confraternity of the rosary, he has in all corners of the world brothers and sisters who pray for him. How very precious that is. And the power of the rosary confraternity consists in the fact that as long as we are enrolled in the confraternity, then whether we are praying alone or praying as a group, we are united in the great prayer of the whole confraternity that numbers hundreds of thousands. Now, what kind of union is a confraternity? It is a union in charity because membership in the confraternity of the Holy Rosary especially binds us to one another in love. Love for God, love for Our Lady, and love for one another. And the common act that we do together, which unites us in a spiritual communion, is the praying of the Holy Rosary. For the Rosary, devoutly recited, is an act of faith and of love an act of hope, an act that unites us more perfectly to Christ through Mary. Membership in the confraternity, although it is completed by enrollment in the registry of a sodality, is begun by your mental desire, that is, by your expressing to a person in authority, such as the rosary promoter or any Dominican priest, expressing your desire, your loving intention to be part of this confraternity. And then you make that resolution to pray just 15 decades of the rosary every week. 15 decades of the rosary a week. That means that what we've just done right now, we've completed our obligation for the whole week. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't pray the rosary every day nevertheless. But you know, our Blessed Mother makes the bar quite low for joining the Rosary Confraternity because she wants as many of her children to be bonded together in love like this. Now, wherever you may be, 
whether you're alone in your own home or even lying sick in hospital or sitting at your desk at work or traveling on the metro, wherever you may be, the Rosarian, which is the beautiful name given to members of the Rosary Confraternity, the Rosarian can pray the Rosary and he is permitted to pray it just one decade at a time. You can split up the rosary into one decade at a time, praying it at different moments of the day. And this way, we take up the, the exhortation to pray at all times, weaving the rosary throughout your day. How beautiful this is. And through this act of mental desire, this act of faith and love, of praying the rosary with devotion, you will be contributing to the spiritual treasury of the confraternity and also drawing immense graces from this same treasury which is filled up with the prayers of countless millions and with the merits and spiritual riches of the entire Dominican order over our past 800 years of history. Now before I explain this idea of a spiritual treasury and of spiritual riches, let me first address the issue of the mental desire that is necessary as we pray the rosary. What do I mean by this? St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, that great 18th century promoter of the rosary confraternity, said that in our time, these present times, it is our hearts that must be changed. And according to the revelation of our Lord to him, the Lord said to him, that the changing of hearts will be accomplished only by the rosary proclaimed, explained, preached, and recommended everywhere. But for hearts to be changed, there must then be a genuine spiritual communion. That is a true act of faith and of charity that is made in praying the rosary. Hence, just as our brother St. Thomas Aquinas said that we cannot merely receive the sacrament of the Eucharist in a bodily way, but must also receive spiritually, that is to say, with faith and with charity. So the same can be said of the rosary. If our hearts are to be changed, if we are to deepen our communion of love with Christ and one another, if we are to be filled with steadfast faith and that kind of charity that can move mountains. So our prayer must be spiritually fruitful too. As such, the Rosary Confraternity and countless popes through the ages have stressed that the soul of the Rosary consists in meditation on the mysteries of salvation. A mental prayer as we contemplate the mysteries of our Lord's love for us and what he has done for us. As you might know, Our Lady of the Rosary appeared at Fatima. And not only at Fatima, but subsequently she appeared again to Sister Lucia. And she asked her to promote the first Saturday devotion. And part of that Saturday devotion, the first Saturday devotion, of reparation to Our Lady involves meditation for at least 15 minutes on the mysteries of salvation. And it's very interesting, isn't it, that Our Lady should appear and ask specifically for 15 minutes of meditation. And this is independent of the praying of the rosary as well. So merely saying the rosary without meditation would be to render it soulless and thus less effective, less powerful. We might use then different ways to help us to meditate on the mysteries. And what has been done so beautifully for us today is we've seen the rosary prayed with song, with movement, having to stand and bow. All these things help us to concentrate and focus a bit better. But above all, in each of these chapels, there has been an image, a piece of sacred art, to help us to focus, lest our minds wander and be distracted. If I may dare to give you a little advertisement, my own little book, 
Mysteries Made Visible, which is still available, I believe, in the bookshop downstairs, was an attempt to help us to pray the rosary with sacred art. It was actually launched at the 450th anniversary of the Battle of Lepanto in 2021. And the idea is that through art, we can be led to a more concentrated and deeper meditation on the mysteries of the rosary. Because you see, the aim of the rosary is that we should all become mystics in a very real sense. And those were the words of Pope Leo XIII. We are called to become mystics, every single one of us. And the rosary assists us in doing that. Pope Leo thus says that the result of praying the rosary within the confraternity is that while each one contributes a little towards the common treasure, all receive a great deal from it. So what is this treasure that he speaks of? Now it is a beautiful teaching of the church, often forgotten or neglected in our time, that we Christians are one holy communion of saints such that, as St. Paul says, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one, one member is honored, all rejoice together. This is one of the effects of our spiritual communion with one another, our union in charity for one another within the body of Christ that is the church. Pope St. Paul VI teaches that because of this spiritual communion, he says there exists a supernatural solidarity whereby the sin of one harms the others, just as the holiness of one also benefits the others. Thus, he said, the Christian faithful give each other mutual aid to attain their supernatural aim, which of course is heaven. Following in the footsteps of Christ, he said, the Christian faithful have always endeavored to help one another on the path leading to the heavenly Father through prayer the exchange of spiritual goods, and through penitential expiation. The more they have been immersed in the fervor of charity, the more they have imitated Christ in his sufferings, carrying their crosses in expiation for their own sins and those of others, the more they can be certain that they could help their brothers to obtain salvation from God, who is the Father of mercies. And so, my friends, our praying of the rosary is one of those prayers, one of those spiritual goods that you and I can use to help one another in the church, particularly helping those who are fellow members in the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. The treasury of the church, therefore, refers to the infinite and inexhaustible value of the expiation and the merits of Christ and of Our Lady and of all the saints, and indeed, and of all our prayers and good works throughout the world. This is the treasure that Pope Leo XIII and Pope Paul VI are referring to, the treasury of all the sacrifices, all the good works and prayers that have merit before God for our salvation. Just think of the sacrifices that all of you have put in, in coming here on pilgrimage, in making this a day of pilgrimage, as we heard right at the beginning. Or think of the sacrifices and merits that are to be gained as you sit there patiently waiting for Holy Mass and allowing me to witter on at you. In particular though, for the Rosary Confraternity and its members, Leo XIII is referring specifically to the treasury of merit of St. Dominic, our father, and of all the Dominican saints of the whole Dominican order, and of all the merits and graces that we, the first, second, and third order members of this Dominican order, contribute to the treasury. To this treasury, Rosarians can add their own good works as members of the confrat confraternity and they also receive and draw spiritual goods and graces from this treasury. 
The beauty of spiritual goods is that, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, spiritual goods such as charity can be possessed by many at the same time, unlike material goods. So whereas human beings fight it out for limited material resources, this is not the case for spiritual resources. As the great Dominican theologian, Father Reginald Garrigou Lagrange, who was the mentor of Pope St. John Paul II at our university in Rome, the Angelicum, as he said, whereas the unbridled search for material goods profoundly divides men, the quest for spiritual goods unites them. And this union is all the more evident as we seek the superior spiritual goods. And the superior spiritual good that we seek is an increase in charity. Therefore, all those who are members of the Rosary Confraternity, all who love Our Lady and humbly pray her rosary, all who desire the triumph of Mary's Immaculate Heart, are united in a common quest for spiritual goods. Above all, we are united in our hope for the salvation of poor sinners. And that, after all, is why the Dominican friars were founded, preaching for the salvation of souls. This perpetual concern for the salvation of souls is therefore at the very heart of the Dominican mission and charism. We find it rooted in the tears of our father, St. Dominic, who shed his tears and performed penances for the salvation of souls. What will become of poor sinners, he said. And perhaps you sit there yourself and you have thought to yourself in this day and age, what will become of poor sinners? Weep and shed your tears, yes, but do not rant and do not rave about it, but pray. Take up the rosary and pray. For when St. Dominic was wondering what he should do in order to combat the Albigensian heresy, Our Lady appeared to him and gave him the rosary and said to him, preach my Psalter. That is to say, pray the rosary and teach others to pray it. I remind you that Our Lady of the Rosary, when she appeared to the children of Fatima, said on the 13th of July in 1917, after each decade, say these words, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. With these words, our Queen and Mother reminds us of the goal of the Rosary and of the effect of our spiritual communion as a confraternity and as Christians, which is that we should all be led to heaven by the mercy and grace of God, where we hope to all be united in charity to God and to one another as one holy communion of saints, praising him, our Lord and God, eternally among the angelic choirs of heaven. The power of the rosary, therefore, consists in the bond of charity with which it is prayed, a love that unites us to one another and unites us to Christ through Mary. The more intense our love, the more powerful the prayer of the rosary becomes. And as rosarians, our prayer is intensified and made more efficacious by the merits and spiritual goods of the Dominican order and its saints. I believe that the revival of the Rosary Confraternity and an increase in its number is very much at the heart of Mary's blueprint for the renewal of the world, of our countries, of our homes, and of our hearts. Through the Rosary and together as a confraternity, we daily implore our Lord and God to send tremendous graces for the conversion of souls and for a deeper union of charity in our hearts with him. Therefore, if you've not already done so, please join the Rosary Confraternity. You could do it online. You could speak to, well, me, or to a Dominican friar, or to a Dominican sister. 
You don't need to re re repeat your enrollment if you're already a member. You can have joined anywhere in the world. But whether, whether you've given any thought before or not, I hope that you will now go away and say to yourself, yes, I'm going to join a Rosary Confraternity and I want to be a member. All it takes is that you manifest your desire to a Dominican and that you start praying 15 decades of the Rosary every week. There is surely no easier way to tug at Our Lady's heart and to, bring, and to make her happy. Thank you.